Sir Richard, what is membership categorization analysis? Membership categorization analysis, or MCA as it's become known more recently, is a, it's a sociology, and, and so given it's sociology, it's a way of understanding the way the social world operates, the way the social world works, uh, and how we as members of that social world interpret, act upon, and make sense of the world in our everyday life. In a sense, it kind of the, the fundamental basis of MCA, or membership category work, is our um, understanding of how and why people do things. Um, in a sense, it kind of, as a sociology, it's interested in social action, not individual action as such. And it comes from the work of, of obviously, of Harvey Sachs, developed at the same time that uh, he was interested in the sequential analysis of conversation as well. So you have these two strands. CA developed, um, CA developed quite a pace, um, whereas membership categorization device analysis as it was originally known from, from Sachs's work uh, was incorporated into a number of um, discussions of, of uh, research um, mostly under the, under the banner or remit of uh, ethnomethodology which is where it naturally sits. Uh, within that ethnomethodological remit of course it's interested in how people do stuff, um, the methods that people use in order to go about the world. Um, it kind of sat within that for a while, and has done for a while, um, with um, turning up in work such as Paul Drew's work on um, firing on Sandy Row, which, was, which, which highlighted how uh, a police officer in Belfast, oh, it might be Derry, uh, Belfast, um, should know about where other people live and what was going to happen on certain roads because of the Protestant Catholic makeup. So it's kind of common knowledge that is assumed of a person given their social category. As police officer, they should know something. Unless turns up in Mike Lynch's and Dave Bogan's work, of course, in Spectral History. Um, developed further from, uh, alongside, or with Sachs, sorry, Sachs's work, um, so you're talking about sort of what, what people can know and what be accountable for. You also have uh, Rod Watson and McCool's work uh, in terms of geography about um, how children arrange um, public buildings in a city where they should be in order to get to certain places. So what you start to kind of see is that um, membership categories as such as personal or, or kind of social categories are expandable to um, objects as well. Moreover, they become uh, developed further by such works as Lee and uh, Lena Jayusi's work. Uh, where we kind of like overlay that with morals and entitlements and uh, so we start off with the basic idea uh, of membership categories. We might see that as um, sort of in the Schutzian way typifications. Not necessarily stereotypes. Stereotypes come in there but they're not what they are. They're kind of working knowledge about what social categories or what types of social categories do and what we expect them to do. And of course us being various social categories at various times as well. So we start off with the notion that um, people act in a certain way according to how we um, see them act, according to the social category we see them belonging to. And that's kind of like pretty ordinary, that's kind of, you know, although in a sense it's kind of profound for sociology because sociology is interested in, in, in why people do stuff. Uh, MCA was, well, okay, look, the fact interested in, well, how do people do stuff? In order to understand why, we need to understand how, first of all. So as a sociology interested in what the, the basic question or the classic questions of how is social order possible or the problem of social order. We look at how people do stuff and we find that people don't actually have a problem or that social order is just there, it's all the time. It's created anew each time. Um, in a sense when people make sense of the world, when they interpret actions and they kind of recreate reasons why people did stuff, then they are creating social order in that very moment. And this is what we do all the time. So social order is not a problem. It is just out there. It's something we encounter. It's, we encounter it sometimes as sui generis in terms of Durkheim's aphorism, as, as Garfinkel points out. Um, but in a sense, so we treat the world as existing. As, we treat the world as, as out there. And then we engage with the world according to what we know about the world.